Yo, what's happening guys? Welcome to your 25th Node.js tutorial and in this video we're going to talk about templating engines. Alright then guys, so, so far we've just been sending back these strings right here. This is the home page, this is the contact page and we've sent back yeah, a dynamic string here with the parameters of the name that they pop in the URL in it. But what if we want to send back a HTML page? Well, we can do that. We can do that by using the send file method and then we just pop the absolute URL to the file in here. Now I can use underscore underscore do name to get the directory of the current file which is in here. Then I can just concatenate that with, if I spell it correctly, with the file name I want to send. So it's just going to be this index.html file. So forward slash index.html. And I could do the same thing for the contact page. I'm going to paste that there and then change this to contact. So let's save this and run it. We'll say nodemon app.js. And then I'm just going to open this up in a browser. So localhost 3000, hit enter. And now we're getting that web page. So this is doing it really quickly for us. It's uh, going out and grabbing that file and just loading it into the browser. Now, if I say forward slash contact, it's going to do the same thing and we get that page. But what if we want to inject some dynamic content into these pages? Say some data from a database. For example, on this route right here, we're saying forward slash profile, forward slash then whatever name of the profile we visit, we're going to display the profile for that person. Now, okay, we can pop the name there in a string, but what if we want to send a HTML page with this name on and some other information about that person? So right now, if I go to forward slash profile, and then forward slash Ryu, I just get, you are viewing the profile of Ryu, but I want to inject some dynamic content into this. And that's where template engines come into play. So with a JavaScript template engine, what we can do is embed data and JavaScript code into our HTML files. So we can then inject this dynamic content into the file which we return to the client or browser. And there's a variety of different engines that we can use with Express such as Jade or Mustache. We're gonna look at one called EJS, which is a lightweight templating engine making it really easy to get started with. And you can find more about the templating engine EJS at embedded EJS, is that right? Anyway, I'll leave this link down below um, and you can go and read about it. But basically, it's dead simple. Whenever we want to output some data, we use these little percentage signs, okay? And this is very similar to the way that ASP web forms work. So if you're familiar that, uh, with that, then you're gonna pick this up, no problem. Otherwise, it is dead simple and I'm gonna go through it step by step anyway. So. Let's use EJS in our application. Now, the first thing we have to do is install EJS in our application. It is a package. So let's exit out of this process by pressing Control C. Yes, we want to terminate. And then let's use the Node Package Manager to install EJS. So the way we do that is by saying npm install EJS. And then if you want to save this as a dependency, which I'm going to, then just do the save flag as well. So if you hit enter now, that's just gonna go out and grab it and it's gonna install it into your application. So this should just take a minute or so. There we go, cool. So now we can use EJS in our application. So how does this all work? Well, the first thing we need to do is tell Express that we want to use EJS as our view engine. That's what it's called, a view engine, right? Or a template engine. So the way we do that is by using this variable right here and then using the set method to set a view engine. So let's do that. Let's say app.set, and then we're passing the parameter to say what we want to set first of all, and that's the view engine. And then we say which view engine we want to use, EJS, okay? So now Express knows that we want to use EJS as our view engine. And by default, when we request some views or template, it's going to look in the forward slash views folder for them, right? That's the default behavior. So why don't we go ahead and create a view folder? So I'll go to new folder, call this views. And then what I'm going to do is make a new template file. 
So we'll say new file, and this is going to be for the profile down here. So we'll call this profile dot, and then it's not dot HTML, it's dot EJS. And this tells Express that this is an EJS template. All right. So now we can do exactly the same as we can do in HTML here. We can structure it just like a HTML document, but now we can embed JavaScript and data into it. So first of all, let's just grab the contents of this dude right here, just for simplicity, and paste it in. And I'm going to save it right there. Now then, how do we render this view, this template, when the user visits this route? Well, we don't use send file. We're not using send file to send this EJS file. Instead, we're going to use a method called render. And what that does is render a view. OK, so this is to do with views and template engines. And we don't need to, you know, give the whole path name or anything like that because it knows to look in this views folder. That's the default behavior. So what we need to do is pass through a string to say what the name of the view is. And in this case, it's profile. So we'll say render profile. And that's all there is to it. So if we were to save this now and run it through Nodemon, so Nodemon app.js, and when this is running a browser, I'm going to the profile of Ryu, so I'll hit enter. And now we get that HTML there. Now this looks like the home page, but that's just because we've copied and pasted the home page there. So what if we want to inject some dynamic content in here? Because that's the whole idea. That's why we're using a template. So let's go ahead and grab this thing that they input on the URL again. And the way we pass data to a view is by passing an object as a second parameter to this render method. So just an object. And then we can pass through properties to this object, which are going to contain data. So I'm going to call this first property person. OK, and then I'll set that equal to this thing right here. And we know we can get that from the request object. So I'll say that's equal to request dot params dot name, which is this property right here. So now we're passing this data through into the profile view and we can access that in the profile view using this property person. So let's save this dude and head over here. And now what I want to do is output the data round about here. We'll say welcome to the profile of, and then we're going to embed this data. And we saw how to do that on the EJS website. We open our angle brackets, we do a percentage sign. Then when we're outputting data, it's an equal sign. And the data we want to output is just the person, right? because that's what we pass through as the property name right there. So let's close those brackets with a percentage sign and an angle bracket. Then we can save this. What I'm going to do is just restart this server just in case. And then I'm going to head to the browser, press enter. And now we see welcome to the profile of Ryu. Cool. So now what we've done is we've grabbed this data from the URL, then we've passed it into the view by using this object right here, and then we've output it dynamically by using these EJS tags right here. How cool is that? So what if we want to output more data? Well, we can do. We can output as much as we want. So imagine that when a user visits this route and they type a name in, then we query a database. We search for that name and we bring back more information about that person, such as their age or their job. And then we want to output that to the view as well. Well, we're not going to query a database in this tutorial. We are going to do that in later tutorials. But what I'm going to do is just make up some dummy data here and show you how we can insert more data into the view. So let's create a variable. And I'm going to call this equal. Sorry, I'm going to call it data. And I'm going to set it equal to an object. and in this object, I'm just going to set a few param uh, parameters. So first of all, I'm going to say age, and I'm going to set that equal to 29. Then I'll say job, and he is a ninja. OK, so now we have an object, more data we want to pass through into this view. So let's go ahead and make another property on this object right here. Remember, this is just an object that we're passing through, and this is one property on it. 
So let's add in another property. We'll say data and set that equal to this variable right here, data. Okay, let's save that and head back to the view and let's output this data right here. So in this p tag, we'll delete that junk and do a strong tag and we'll say age and I'm going to set that equal to some dynamic data. Remember, we open our tags with the angle bracket percentage then equals because it's data and then I'm going to pop in the data dot age. Remember, data is the name of the parameter and we have the age property on that data object. So data.age. Let's close that off. And then I'll copy this dude and paste it underneath. This time it's going to be the job. And then data.job. Save that. And I'm going to restart this by typing rs, hitting enter, then going to a browser again, hitting enter. And now we see that, da uh, that data dynamically inserted into this view. Pretty cool, right? So now we know how to inject data into views and how to serve those views to users. So when we start working with databases as well, uh, we're in a good position now to start working with all that dynamic data. And we're going to do that later on. Uh, one more thing I want to talk about in these templates is just adding normal JavaScript code like if statements or things like that. And I'm not going to do it in this tutorial because I'm already at about 12 minutes. So I'm going to leave that for the next tutorial and I'll see you guys then.